the Lord will soon come. Yet they don't watch and prepare for his return. How should we wait to meet the Lord's purpose? Jesus spoke very clearly. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go you out to meet him. People need only hear his voice and come out to welcome him. Only then will they watch and wait for the Lord's return. Key to whether we can welcome Lord's return is whether we are able to hear the voice of God. The Lord will provide revelations when he comes. We needn't listen to his voice to be raptured. Right. right. How could it be feasible to merely await the revelation of the Lord? Could the Lord thus act? Did the Lord tell us to await his revelation? If people testify that the Lord has come and we don't seek or examine their testimony, then how will we be able to hear his voice? What you say accords with the Bible. But I have a question for you. Okay, thank God. For years, we've believed in the Lord and have followed the example of Paul. We've been faithful to the name and way of the Lord. Ah, yes. And the crown of righteousness surely awaits us. Amen. Amen. We should focus on working hard for the Lord and watching for his return. Thus we can enter the kingdom of heaven. For the Bible says, they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. Amen. Amen. We believe the Lord's promise. He'll take us into the kingdom of heaven at his return. Could there really be anything wrong with this? Please fellowship with us. Okay. 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 In watching for the arrival of the Lord, most people believe that they need only work hard for the Lord and follow the example of Paul in order to be directly taken into the kingdom of heaven when he arrives. It may match people's conceptions, but does it match God's wishes? Is it? The Lord Jesus said, not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And in your name have cast out devils? And in your name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. In the words of the Lord Jesus, we see that Jesus said, But he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. He did not say, All those who work hard and keep his name can enter the kingdom of heaven. Indeed. Is this not fact? This shows that working hard for the Lord is not necessarily the same as doing the will of God. Doing God's will means to obey the work of God to view practicing God's word and obeying God as being above all else. Indeed. Thus, they can abide by God's commandments, perform their duty as required by God, and truly dedicate themselves to God without thought of what they might gain in return. All they do is practice truth, obey God. Only then do they do God's will. Oh. So that's how it is. Though they work and make great sacrifices, many of those who believe in the Lord do so in order to enter the kingdom of heaven yes. and be rewarded. It isn't to love God and obey Him. Such devotion to God is nothing more than making a deal with Him. Despite working hard for God, Many people have never put the truth into practice, nor do they exalt or testify to God. Instead, they often make an idol of themselves and make others worship and follow them. Everything they do is to maintain their own position and income. Are such people those who put God's word into practice and obey God? Are they those who do the will of God? No, no they're not. They're not. No. Such people serve God, but they also oppose Him. Yes. They're the hypocritical Pharisees. It can be said that they are evildoers. How could such people enter the kingdom of heaven? No. 
They will not. Let's look at a passage of the words of Almighty God. Okay. okay. Almighty God says, I decide the destination of each man not on the basis of age, seniority, amount of suffering, or least of all, the degree of misery, but on whether they possess truth. There is no other choice but this. You must realize that all those who do not follow the will of God will be punished. This is an immutable fact. Therefore, all those who are punished are so punished for the righteousness of God and as retribution for their evil acts. Almighty God's words make it clear Entering the kingdom of heaven is not based on how much they work indeed, or suffer. Indeed. It's based on if they practiced God's words, if they follow God's commandments, and whether or not they do God's will. That's the criteria to enter God's kingdom. Their fellowship is so clear. For years I've preached, yet not known how to do the heavenly Father's will. All I knew was to work and sacrifice for the Lord. I paid no attention to seeking the Lord's will. True. Today I have discovered that nothing is more crucial than doing God's will. Indeed. I overlooked this. I'm so ashamed. Though we spent for the Lord and worked hard, we did not practice the Lord's words nor obey Him. Indeed. Everything we did was in order to enter the kingdom of heaven. All was so that we might be blessed. In this, weren't we deceiving God? We, we were. were. We were. We have just fellowshiped that people can only enter God's kingdom by doing the heavenly Father's will. What then are God's requirements for watching and waiting for the Lord's arrival? Yes. yes. In Matthew 25, 6, The Lord Jesus said, And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go you out to meet him. Amen. Amen. There's also Revelation 16, 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. And Revelation 3, 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Amen. In the book of Revelation are numerous mentions that he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. Amen. 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 So great. In these prophecies, we clearly see that when He returns, during the last days, the Lord will speak to the churches. Thus the Lord asked us to be wise virgins and pay attention to His voice. People need only hear His voice and come out to welcome Him. Only then will they watch and wait for the Lord's return, attend the wedding feast of the Lamb, and be taken before God's throne. Ah. The wedding feast of the Lamb refers to accepting judgment in the last days and delighting in the river of life that flows from God's throne. That is, accepting all the truths expressed by Christ of the last days and being purified by God into an overcomer. Only overcomers will enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. Yes. Today, Christ of the last days, Almighty God expresses all truths for man's salvation. Almighty God's words are now online for people in places all over the world to seek and examine. By seeking and examining the words and work of Almighty God, those wise virgins have recognized God's voice and returned before the throne yes. of God. Yes. Only such people have attended the wedding feast of the Lamb. 
are the overcomers God will make before the disaster. Amen. So great. Only these people will enter the kingdom of heaven. But many believe watching and waiting for the Lord's coming only involves working hard for the Lord. They do not seek the truth in the big issue of the coming of the Lord. They cling to their conceptions and imaginings and refuse to hear God's voice and will never behold the appearance of the Lord. Watching and waiting in this way, then, is neither real nor meaningful. Indeed. It is meaningless. Indeed. Indeed. Watching and waiting has nothing to do with people's actions. What's key is if they can hear the Lord's voice, if they welcome the Lord's return. Whether they can achieve this standard is really what's key. Amen. Everyone, let's read more of the words of Almighty God. Yes, let's. let's. let's, let's. Almighty God says, The return of Jesus is a great salvation for those who are capable of accepting the truth. But for those who are unable to accept the truth, it is a sign of condemnation. You should choose your own path and should not blaspheme against the Holy Spirit and reject the truth. You should not be an ignorant and arrogant person, but someone who obeys the guidance of the Holy Spirit and longs for and seeks the truth. Only in this way will you benefit. I advise you to tread the path of belief in God with care. Do not jump to conclusions. What's more, do not be casual and carefree in your belief in God. You should know that, at the very least, those who believe in God should be humble and reverential. Those who have heard the truth and yet turn their nose up at it are foolish and ignorant. Those who have heard the truth and yet carelessly jump to conclusions or condemn it are beset by arrogance. No one who believes in Jesus is qualified to curse or condemn others. You should all be someone who is rational and accepts the truth. Amen. 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 Today, the incarnate Almighty God performs judgment of the last days. Through expressing the truth, Almighty God reveals each kind of man and God's sheep will hear the voice of God. All those who seek and examine the true way and accept the truth are to be saved by God. Amen. Amen. At the same time, God reveals those wicked people who are arrogant and do not accept the truth, as well as the antichrists who condemn and blaspheme against Almighty God. These people are all condemned and eliminated by God. Today, the work of God become flesh has almost reached its end. The work of judgment beginning from the house of God has basically finished. What? what? Huh? God's God's soon so the work of the church's rapture will finish very soon. Wise virgins should right away examine Almighty God's work of the last days. Otherwise, the doors of salvation shall close. If you wait till the Lord publicly appears whilst riding upon a cloud, you might be thinking of the Lord's words, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. I don't know whether these words mean receiving God's approval or being condemned by God. Hmm. I remember. These words were spoken by Jesus to Thomas. Indeed. Indeed. They are a reminder of how dumb and wrong we were and how we watched and waited for the Lord. We almost missed it. Thanks be to the Lord. God is gracious to us. Today, you have testified to us of Almighty God's work. This is an opportunity from God. Indeed. Indeed. Everyone, let's accept Almighty God's work of the last days now. No more. Shall we delay, as this is clearly the work of God? Right. right. How dumb we were to get stuck in endless examination. Right. Yes. We're so foolish. We shouldn't wait anymore. 
indeed. We should accept as soon as possible. Almighty God's words are indeed the truth. They really can conquer people. It looks as if, having heard more of the preaching of the Eastern Lightning, people will surely follow Almighty God. If they all accept the Eastern Lightning, then the church that I have spent so much effort building will become their church. And who will listen to my preaching? That's not right. I can't let them accept this way. You! Uncle! You! My brother. Uncle, come down, uncle. Uncle, have some water. <coughs> Giant, please let's stop here for today. Dad's exhausted. We should let him rest. Okay. Let's fellowship later. Okay. Okay. Dad? When? Didn't you sleep? No. I couldn't. What was on your mind? Dad, I was thinking of what Jin and the others said. Their fellowship was so enlightening. The wedding feast of the Lamb, overcomers, the work of judgment, God becomes flesh to do in the last days, what it means to watch and to wait, how to discern the true Christ and false ones. Who but God could possibly speak these truths so clearly. Dad, their fellowship of Almighty God's words really showed me that we've been living amid vagueness, blindly clinging to our own conceptions, believing Lord will return upon a white cloud, that we need only work hard to enter the kingdom of heaven. We rejected any who preached the coming of the Lord, neither seeking nor examining, nor being wise virgins who listen out for the Lord's voice. Our watching and waiting has no basis in the Lord's words. We do nothing but wait like fools. This is not in keeping with the Lord's will. If the Eastern Lightning is the Lord's return, and we're still waiting, then we'll forever regret, sorely regret, what are you saying? You wish to look into the Eastern Lightning? Yes. And I want to lead others to seek and examine. How dare you? I built this church with my own hands. I won't allow you to lead them to examine the Eastern Lightning. Dad, I've thought it through. Years I've waited for the Lord. I do not want to end as one of the hypocritical Pharisees, forsaken by the Lord. You! I've said it so many times. Why do you still not listen, huh? How couldn't I know when the Lord comes? I've spent my whole life studying this. I've learned all the passages in the Bible concerning the Lord's return. How many years have you believed? How much suffered? 
How many times have you read the Bible? Huh? Dad, we rely on our credentials mm. and suffering and knowledge of the Bible, believing Lord will appear to us on his return. Yet we do not seek God's words and his work. Is this not the same path walked by the Pharisees? Why repeat the very same mistakes? Dad, let me speak plainly. It's not that you didn't understand the fellowship of them. You're afraid these believers will convert to the Eastern Lightning. You resist because you fear losing your position. Don't you knowingly transgress? In this, haven't you become like the Pharisees? Dad, if you keep opposing, you'll be in serious trouble. When? Why aren't you listening to what I'm saying? Huh? Even if it results in death, we will not convert to the Eastern Lightning. Dad, I'd never have imagined you would say something like this. We have been expecting night and day. Aren't we longing for the Lord's return? If Almighty God really is the return of Jesus, aren't you afraid of opposing God? If you keep opposing in this way, you'll end up weeping and gnashing your teeth. Dad. The church is mine. You simply don't understand me. None of you listen. All of you disobey me and... <laughs> oh Lord, I've waited so long. Why do you stay silent? Why is it so dark within my spirit? Why do I always feel so afraid? Could I really have opposed you? Although the Eastern Lightning testifies that you have arrived, they steal my sheep and tear down my church. How could I tolerate this? But now is already the late period of the last days. Throughout the whole world, only the Eastern Lightning openly testifies to your arrival. I do not know if it's true that the Eastern Lightning is your return. The entire religious world opposes and condemns it. I can only follow the religious world in doing the same. Oh Lord, could it be that I really oppose you? I just simply don't know. I beg you not to forsake me and to appear to me. <laughs> Dad, it's cold. Let's go inside. Owen, my health is getting worse every single day. I don't have long to live. I've spent my whole life waiting for the Lord's arrival. I haven't got long left. 
I wish to behold the return of the Lord. So, so much. Could it be that the Eastern Lightning I oppose truly is the return of the Lord Jesus? If that's the case, then I'm in a lot of trouble. Dad, so stop condemning. Let's go and read the words of Almighty God and see if he is the return of the Lord. If he is, hadn't we better accept him? You know, the chief priests, scribes, and Pharisees of Judaism believed in God their whole life. And were they not condemned because they opposed God incarnate, the Lord Jesus? Dad, we have to learn from this. We cannot walk the path of the Pharisees. If the Eastern Lightning really is the true way, then I have committed quite a great sin by my constant opposition to the Eastern Lightning. I have no chance. The Lord is righteous. Dad. Oh, Lord. Dad has believed in the Lord his whole life. He suffered much and spent decades waiting for the arrival of the Lord. It turns out he has committed a great sin with regard to the coming of the Lord. He's completely missed his chance. No wonder Dad always said he felt afraid and restless. This is very likely his punishment for opposing God. The Lord said that when he comes, he will separate the goats from the sheep, the good servants from the evil ones, and will reward good and punish evil. Could it be that the Lord's words have been thus fulfilled? For the last few years, Dad is stubbornly opposed and turned away countless people preaching the gospel. And who knows how many brothers and sisters he has stopped from seeking and examining the true way. God actually gave him many opportunities and several years to examine the true way. He wasted every chance he had. That was a close one. I almost carried on opposing. This is the sin of once more nailing God to the cross. By stubbornly opposing in this way, we deserve more than death. How could we have expected to be taken into the kingdom of heaven? How I regret not examining Almighty God's work of the last days earlier. When we miss an opportunity, we can never get it back. It's a tragic lesson. Brothers and sisters, peace in the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're now in the late period of the last days. Exactly. exactly. The various prophecies of Lord's arrival are fulfilled. We all await the return of the Lord. Amen. Amen.
Ah, Pastor Yang, you say the Lord Jesus has returned. So where is the Lord? Where do we go to see the Lord? Yes, yes, yes. Where? where? Thanks be to the Lord. We all long for the Lord's return. If we wish to behold the Lord, to see his appearance, we must first hear the Lord's voice. Indeed. Indeed. Almighty God has expressed all truths for judgment of the last days. They are the words the Holy Spirit speaks to the churches. Amen. Amen. Many have already read the words of Almighty God and heard God's voice. They have all been taken before God and are attending the wedding feast of the Lamb. What a great blessing that is. Such a great blessing. Yet today, many are still unable to discern the voice of God. And so, today, from the Church of Almighty God, we've invited Sister Shang. Hello. 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 Sister Chen. Everyone, hello. 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 Sister Li. Thanks be to God. Thank, Thank the Lord. Lord. We've invited them to fellowship on how to identify God's voice. So we'll know how to ascertain that Almighty God is the return of Lord Jesus. What do you say? Great! Great. Great. Brothers and sisters, the question you've asked is important. Indeed. To accept God's work of the last days and behold His appearance, we must know how to identify God's voice. Yes. In fact, Identifying the voice of God means recognizing the words and utterances of God and recognizing the characteristics of the Creator's words. Regardless of whether their words of God become flesh or the utterances of the Spirit of God, they're all words spoken by God to mankind from up high. Such are the characteristics of God's words. Here, God's authority and identity are clearly manifested. It can be said, this is the unique means the Creator speaks. Yes. Yes. Surely each time He becomes flesh, God's utterances cover many areas. Most are God's demands and His admonitions, administrative decrees and commandments, words of judgment and revelation of corrupt mankind so too are their words of prophecies and God's promises to mankind. They are the expression of the truth, the way, and the life. Amen. They all reveal the substance of God's life, representing all God has and is. Amen. Amen. And so, man is able to see from the words God expresses. God's words are the truth. They have authority and power. Amen. Amen. Thus, if you wish to know if the words expressed by Almighty God are the voice of God, you can look at the words of the Lord Jesus and of Almighty God. You can compare and see if they're the words expressed by one spirit and whether they are the work done by one God. If their source is the same, then this proves that Almighty God's words are God's utterances. Almighty God is God's appearance. There is a passage so practical. First, we look at the Lord Jesus' requirements and admonitions for man. Okay. 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 For example, Lord Jesus said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like to it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. In chapter 5 of Matthew, the Lord Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice 
and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let's next look at what the Lord has said about administrative decrees. Great. great. Matthew 12, 31 to 32. The Lord Jesus said, Why I say to you, All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven to men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven to men. And whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Also, in Matthew 5.22, the Lord Jesus said, But I say to you, that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever shall say, You fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Amen. In addition to these administrative decrees, there are the Lord's words judging and exposing the Pharisees. The Lord Jesus said, But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer you them that are entering to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you compass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, you make him twofold, more the child of hell than yourselves. Brothers and sisters, the Lord Jesus also spoke promises and prophecies to man. Let's read them together. Okay. okay. Please turn to John 14, 2 to 3. The Lord Jesus said, I go to, to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be me also. Amen. There's also John 12, 47 to 48. The Lord Jesus also said, And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejects me and receives not my words has one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Amen. So too is there Revelation 21, 3 to 4. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And, and God, God shall wipe, wipe away all tears from their, from their eyes. eyes. And, and there, there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall, shall there be any more pain. pain. For the, the former things, things are passed away. away. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, from the truths expressed by the Lord Jesus during the Age of Grace, we can see that Lord Jesus was the appearance of the Savior. Amen. Amen and that the Lord's words were God's utterances made to all of mankind. Amen. He directly expressed God's disposition and His will for all mankind to provide for and to lead and personally redeem mankind. This represents God's identity and authority. Amen. Amen. Reading them, we feel that these words are the truth and possess great authority. These words are the voice of God. They are God's utterances to mankind. Amen. Amen. During the last days, the Lord returned. Almighty God performed judgment of the last days. He brought the age of kingdom and ended the age of grace. 
Based upon the Lord Jesus' work of redemption, Almighty God has performed judgment beginning from the house of God and has expressed all truths for mankind's purification and salvation. The words of Almighty God are rich in content and comprehensive. As Almighty God says, It can be said that the words in this part are the first utterances since creation that God spoke to all of mankind. It is the first time God spoke to the mankind He created in such a detailed and systematic manner. It is, of course, also the first time God spoke to all of mankind through the most passages of His Word and over the longest sustained period of time, this is something unprecedented. Moreover, the words in this part are the first writings God issued among mankind to expose man, guide man, judge man, and speak heart to heart to man. And the first utterances in which God made known to man his footsteps his dwelling place, his disposition, what he has and is, his thoughts, and his care for mankind. It can be said that this is the first time since creation that God spoke and uttered his voice to mankind from the third heaven, and the first time that God revealed himself and expressed his heart's voice to mankind through spoken words in his original identity. Amen. Almighty God has expressed so many words we to all need God. to listen carefully. Everyone, in the last days, the words of Almighty God are wide-ranging and quite rich. In them is mainly judgment, the administrative decrees and commandments of the Age of Kingdom, as well as God's requirements, admonitions, promises, prophecies, and so forth. Next, Let's first read God's words about His admonitions and requirements, as well as His work. What do you say? Okay. okay. Almighty God says, Today those who bear genuine love toward me, people like these, are blessed. Blessed are those who submit to me. They will surely stay in my kingdom. Blessed are those who know me. They will surely wield power in my kingdom. Blessed are those who seek after me. They will surely escape from Satan's bonds and enjoy blessing in me. Blessed are those who are able to forsake themselves. They will surely enter into my possession and inherit my kingdom's bounty. Those who run around for my sake I will commemorate. Those who go to expense for my sake I will joyfully embrace. Those who make offering to me I will give enjoyments. Those who find enjoyment in my words I will bless. They will surely be the pillars that hold up the ridgepole in my kingdom. They will surely have matchless bounty in my house, and no one can compare with them. Amen. Almighty God's voice is so familiar, it sounds like the Lord Jesus's. You read. Next. Okay. Almighty God says, Before man was redeemed, many of Satan's poisons were already planted within him. After thousands of years of Satan's corruption, man already has within him a nature that resists God. Therefore, when man has been redeemed, it is nothing more than redemption. Where man is bought at a high price, but the poisonous nature within has not been eliminated. Man that is so defiled must undergo a change before being worthy to serve God. Through this work of judgment and chastisement, man will fully come to know the filthy and corrupt substance within him, and he will be able to completely change and become clean. 
Only in this way can man be worthy to return before the throne of God. Amen. Amen. Mankind has developed through tens of thousands of years of history to get where they are today. However, the mankind of my original creation has long ago sunk into degeneracy. They are already not what I intended, and thus people, the way I see them, are already undeserving of the name mankind. They are rather the scum of mankind, looted by Satan and the rotten, walking corpses which Satan lives in and is clothed with. People do not in the least believe in my existence, nor do they welcome my arrival. Mankind only begrudgingly responds to my requests, temporarily agrees with them, and does not sincerely share in life's joys and sorrows with me. As people see me as inscrutable, they begrudgingly pretend to smile at me, betraying their manner of coddling up to power. This is because people have no knowledge of my work, much less of my intention today. I'll be honest with all of you. When the day comes, the suffering of anyone who worships me will be easier to bear than yours. The degree of your faith in me does not, in actuality, exceed that of Job, and even the faith of the Jewish Pharisees surpasses yours. So in the impending days of fire, you will suffer more seriously than the Pharisees when rebuked by Jesus. More seriously than the 250 leaders that had resisted Moses. And more seriously than Sodom under the scorching flames of its destruction. Man lost his God-fearing heart after being corrupted by Satan and lost the function that one of God's creatures should have, becoming an enemy disobedient to God. Man lived under Satan's domain and followed Satan's orders. Thus, God had no way to work among his creatures and was all the more unable to win fear from his creatures. Man was created by God and ought to worship God. But man actually turned his back to God and worshipped Satan. Satan became the idol in man's heart. Thus, God lost his standing in man's heart. Which is to say that he lost the meaning of his creation of man. And so, to restore the meaning of his creation of man, he must restore man's original likeness and rid man of his corrupt disposition. To reclaim man from Satan, he must save man from sin. Only in this way can he gradually restore man's original likeness and restore man's original function. And in the end, restore his kingdom. The ultimate destruction of those sons of disobedience will also be carried out in order to allow man to better worship God and better live upon the earth. Since God created man, he shall make man worship him. Since he wishes to restore man's original function, he shall restore it completely and without any adulteration. Restoring his authority means making man worship him and making man obey him. It means that he shall make man live because of him and make his enemies perish because of his authority. 
It means that he will make every last part of him persist among humanity and without any resistance by man. Amen. The kingdom he wishes to establish is his own kingdom. The humanity he wishes for is one that worships him, one that completely obeys him and has his glory. If he does not save corrupt humanity, the meaning of his creation of man will come to nothing. He will have no more authority among man, and his kingdom will no longer be able to exist upon the earth. If he does not destroy those enemies who are disobedient to him, he will be unable to obtain his complete glory, nor will he be able to establish his kingdom upon the earth. These are the symbols of the completion of his work and the symbols of the completion of his great accomplishment to utterly destroy those among humanity who are disobedient to him and to bring those who have been made complete into rest. Amen. Amen. Almighty God says, You only know that Jesus shall descend during the last days, but how exactly will he descend? A sinner such as you, who has just been redeemed and has not been changed or been perfected by God, can you be after God's heart? For you, you who are still of your old self, it is true that you were saved by Jesus and that you are not counted as sinners because of the salvation of God. But this does not prove that you are not sinful and are not impure. How can you be saintly if you have not been changed. Within, you are beset by impurity, selfish and mean. Yet you still wish to descend with Jesus. You should be so lucky. You have missed a step in your belief in God. You have merely been redeemed, but have not been changed. For you to be after God's heart, God must personally do the work of changing and cleansing you. If you are only redeemed, you will be incapable of attaining sanctity. In this way, you will be unqualified to share in the good blessings of God, for you have missed out a step in God's work of managing man, which is the key step of changing and perfecting. And so you, a sinner who has just been redeemed, are incapable of directly inheriting God's inheritance. Amen. Amen. Sister, would you like to read next? Okay. Almighty God says, You must know what kind of people I desire. Those who are impure are not permitted to enter into the kingdom. Those who are impure are not permitted to besmirch the holy ground. Though you may have done much work, and have worked for many years. In the end, if you are still deplorably filthy, it is intolerable to heaven that you wish to enter my kingdom. From the foundation of the world until today, never have I offered easy access to my kingdom to those who curry favor with me. This is a heavenly law, and no one can break it. You must seek life. Today, those who will be made perfect are the same kind as Peter. They are those who seek changes in their own disposition and are willing to bear testimony to God and perform their duty as a creature of God. Only people such as this will be made perfect. If you only look to rewards, and do not seek to change your own life disposition, then all your efforts will be in vain. And this is an unalterable truth. Amen. Amen.
Thanks be to the Lord. Almighty God expresses man's attitude toward God very clearly and accurately. Only God looks within man's heart and sees the true state of man's depravity. Indeed, only God can speak clearly of God's work and His will for mankind. Only God can know who may enter God's kingdom and who will be annihilated. Yes. Jesus spoke of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven as he came to do the work. Has Almighty God also revealed mysteries? Almighty God says, This stage of work will elucidate for you the law of Jehovah and the redemption of Jesus and is principally so that you may understand the entire work of God's 6,000-year management plan and appreciate all the significance and substance of this 6,000-year management plan. In the last days, Almighty God has come. Almighty God not only has accomplished all prophecies of Lord Jesus, but also laid bare to us the great mysteries of the past and present and of the future, which relate to God's management plan. Yes. yes. Almighty God is our Lord and is our God. Amen. The one true God who created the heavens and earth and rules over all things. Amen. Amen. Oh